welcome back to another episode of the greatest podcast on the face of the earth. I go by the name of LeVar Walker, and I just want to say welcome back to you all. I know I've been missing for a few days. I've been on the road, just got back from Denver, Colorado. Shout out to all the people that came out of Denver, man. We had a good time. Uh, the show was given to me in such short notice. Um, I wasn't expecting the turnout that I got, but it was a huge turnout. So shout out to them. <laughs> Yes, shout out. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to them. Um, before I get any deeper into this show, come in on the comments. Let me know if you guys uh can hear me okay. I just want to make sure that all of you can hear me. You can speak, you can speak. This is live, guys. This is live. Just come in. I want to make sure that my levels are okay and you can hear me okay say something somebody i see y'all watching say something just say you can hear me can you hear me hello we gotta work together guys come on talk to me good thank you uh raymond fisher you could hear me loud and clear and thank thank you to uh 9 p.m king um, what's good, man? Yeah, like I said, man, Denver, Colorado, it was a good show. I got down. Matter of fact, I even put uh, one of the sets up on YouTube now. It's doing great. Y'all can go over to my YouTube page at LeVar Walker TV and check out that. And also, I put up a set where I was live from the Arlington Draft House, and that's doing very, very well on YouTube. Both of them have gotten, I don't know, one is at 43,000 views, another one at 13,000. So go check those out, man. And um, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. And also, too, speaking of being back, on March 14th, I will be on this show called BET's Comic View. BET's Comic View. I'll be on BET's Comic View, hosted by the one and only Mr. Mike Epps. Uh, he will be hosting. Y'all will see him bringing me out on stage as you know, me and Mike have, you know, we've had some past history. Um, but, yeah, it, it's all good. Um, I know he had talked about uh, some about when Shannon did the joke, how he didn't, you know, he's just a comedian. It almost reminded me of when I did the joke, and I'm just a comedian too. But uh, I'm not going to be messy and dig deep to dig into that shit because I don't, I don't, you know, I'm I, you, never mind. But anyway, it's good you guys are here. And me and Mr. Epps are cool too, so it's no big deal. Um, but yeah, Denver was good. It was cold as shit in Denver. It was a lot of it snowed a little bit, then it cleared up and got warm. It was very, very weird. But the people in Denver definitely came out and showed love. And also too, this weekend, well, not this weekend, but March. 29th, I'm going to be at the Stardome in Birmingham, Alabama. So if you are in the Birmingham, Alabama uh, area, come out to Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you, Jason Lee. I'm going to change that name when I get uh, deep off into this. And so much has been going on. So much has been happening in the world. I'm just a comedian trying to figure these jokes out and grind it out and feed my family. But there's a lot going on, and uh, we're going to start this show off. And the first thing I want to talk about is this DJ Academics versus Meek Mill. I don't know if you guys have been watching Twitter or watching the news, but um, it looked like somehow, once again, that Meek Mill got triggered by DJ Academics. Um, I guess for this whole thing about him being wrapped up in gay rumors involving p diddy um and this caused dj academics to go in on meek mill and meek mill responded back as a tough guy and he's losing this battle uh quite bad i mean they dragging him on twitter um they're dragging him on instagram they're dragging him on every outlet and i want to say to the tough guys uh dear street nigga it's over man it's over. You're not going to win being overly emotional on these platforms. You're going to lose. You're going to get crushed. 
and you're going to look like a hypocrite. And it's just not, you know, it's unfortunate because you're watching Meek Mill's career kind of die off and then he's hollering at the same time how he want to beat up somebody and he wants to put his life on the line to go get DJ academics, but then at the same time doing prison reform. You, you, you walk in the fine line. You can't straddle the fence. You can't be a street nigga and Dr. King at the same time. They just don't go hand in hand. And often people are going to call you out on your hypocrisy and then they're no longer going to believe in you. And what's happening right now in the music business is we're seeing a decline in hip hop, specifically a lot of the street and gangster rap, which I am quite happy about. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the children, a lot of these young people are waking up and they're getting away from that. There's no reason for them to even think how we thought being um, that I am of generation X. And like I said it, it before in another podcast, we were just sold a bad bag of goods, toxic masculinity, oversexualization, famine mentality. These are the things that we were sold as Generation X, which was seen in our music, you know, early 90s, Pac, NWA, you know what I mean? Uh, two live crew we we had a lot of that a lot of gangster shit but it's over now it's over these kids you're talking about generations of men we got more uh kids of black millionaires than any other time before which was built primarily off the backbone of hip-hop so that whole little street thing and acting tough and gangster is gonna land your ass in jail and nobody's gonna care like you don't no nobody's gonna care. You're gonna you're gonna go to jail. So we have to let it go. And what's happening right now, what's happening right now is a lot of these kids getting away from gangster rap and country music is starting to dominate the charts, which I am very, very happy about because I am a man of the people, I'm a man for black people. And the quicker we wake up and the quicker we realize that a lot of these behaviors a lot of this celebration of street gangster life, street niggas talking about killing their own kind is detrimental to us as a people. And these niggas should be shamed. They should be shamed into, into they should be shamed and ostracized. Don't nobody want to hear you singing about that shit. And a lot of these kids are converting to country western. You can see it with uh, T.I.'s son, his buddy Red, and you know, Beyonce just did this new country uh, album, and uh, it's what it is, man. It's all good, G.I. Mo. Well, I'll be back out there again. Um, somebody said they had missed me in Virginia. But, yeah, it's good. We're getting away from that street shit and all that culture, and we're waking up. And a lot of you street guys, you are not going to win against these Internet bloggers and people don't even go outside no more. How the fuck you rapping about some street? Niggas don't even go outside. Who goes outside? Who's going outside? People at home on their phone, on the computer. Ain't nobody standing on no block, bro. The block is Twitter. The block is Instagram. That's the block. And all the tough and all the tough stuff back in the 80s and 90s, those areas have been gentrified. You, you can't even afford to live in most of those areas. And that's stretching from Chicago to Detroit to L.A. to all those areas. So those, these are times that are gone. So I would just tell these kids, just be honest. Rap about what it is you really do, right? And, you, and don't go committing crimes and hurting your own kind to get a deal for only people of other races to profit off of you committing genocide in your own community because it's a perpetual circle it's a perpetual cycle i see my man he go do a hit on somebody then he rap about it everybody dancing to it he balling he out the hood now i gotta go do a hit on somebody do my song everybody dance to it i'm out the hood and then was about the hood and they catch up to me. Now I'm in court saying how religious I am. And these were lies. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? We got to make it make sense, man. So that's where I stand. Um, and me going to have to chill, man. Leave, leave him alone. We ain't going to be too long. Dre and Michelle. What's the guy's name? Is Dre and Michelle and uh, Jalen Brown? Is that his name? Or Jalen Green? If y'all don't know about Dre, Dre is a, I don't know, an Instagram model. Um, or maybe it's Jalen Brown. No, this is, who is it, y'all? Is it Jalen Green or Brown? She expecting a baby with Jalen Green. I'm sorry. Let me change that. Let me change it. It's green. All right. So she's expecting a baby with Jalen Green. So let's break this down. Drea is about 41, 42 years old. This young NBA player, she's having this baby with Jalen Green is 21 years of age. Okay. Now. Also, to top it off, Drea has a son the same age as Jalen Green, which means that her son will have a half-brother with a brother his age, which to me is very weird and is very insane. Now, it would be quite easy for, for me to sit here and bash Drea and call her a predator, which is what she is primarily. I mean, we can we can normalize it. I mean, you have celebrities that are picking up, sticking up for Dre, and these are women that are sticking up for her. But I would just ask all these women, ask yourself this. If you had a son, right? If you had a son, and, and your son is an NBA player, and your son comes home with a woman the same age as you. And you know that this boy is an NBA player. Millions, multiple millions and millions of dollars. It will be a little difficult to say that the young man isn't being taken advantage of. It's almost some predatory. It, it's, it's, it's quite predatory to me. That's some predator shit. Like, I'm just keeping it in a book. You you see him, you hovering around these NBA players. And I'm not saying, he, he lame too for doing this. I don't know why you would want to get an old ass woman pregnant like that. And you in your 20s. And I guess, who am I to judge? Because this is the new, this is the new generation. I think the Gen Zers, is that right? I believe the Gen Zers, they have a thing for older women i guess i guess that's like you see all the milf porn that they got out now so i'm not blaming drea per se but this does seem to be predatory i know a lot of you will say well the men do it all the time and typically when the man is with a younger woman that man is providing for the younger woman he has all the money she doesn't have to do anything and in this instance you have a much older woman who is impregnated by a boy that's the same age as her son. And how do we as a society not look at this and scratch our heads and say something is wrong with this shit? I mean, she did. And, and listen, I agree with you, Marcus O'Coy. <laughs> she... she, she she took advantage of an idiot. I, I must say that. You you are absolutely right. But I mean, man, listen, the prefrontal cortex of a of a person doesn't fully develop into the age of 25. And I believe this will probably be a trend. I mean, this woman 41, this boy 20, when that boy 31, he gonna have a 51-year-old baby mother. At 31, at 41, he will have a 
Yeah, a 61-year-old baby mama, man. So she got him. You know what? I'm going to clap it up for her. Fuck this. Clap it up to Dre. Good. You got a duck. You 41. You got this nigga for 18 years. You can. This is retirement plan. This is a retirement plan. And I would encourage more of you old women that have been in the business. You've been tossed around. Body still tight. You still looking good. Go take advantage of more of the young NBA players and let's normalize it because you guys need checks, okay? And you need a way to have a soft landing and a soft life. So I'm not knocking her. I cannot be mad at the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just the game is what it is. So salute to Drea, congratulations. And to the young man, Jalen Green, uh, I will have no pity for the hell that you are about to go through, young man. And will you get mad at that woman? Was she was she sucking your ass dry with that goddamn money? Just look at yourself in the mirror and point the finger at you. This is what you did. And I know she probably milked you and everything. So hopefully, with me talking like this, I could save other young athletes from this type of behavior. Because it's definitely predatory and it's predatory because of the money right she not just gonna go holler at no 21 year old that's working down at the damn chick-fil-a or the ups no she's not so this is, has everything to do with money and stature and she took advantage of i saw him at the airport the boy looked like he was with his mama and it's what it is. This is where we're at right now. And like I said, that is the Gen X. Even, uh, what's my man name? Not my man, uh, Odell Beckham dating Kim Kardashian. I guess he's just having a good time. But hey, it's Kim Kardashian. You know, <laughs> you know, you're not, she's not just the typical 41 year old with five kids. She's a billionaire 41 year old with five kids. And then you can get extra clout and, popularity and work out a business deal so that's what it is so shout out to him Let, let's give drea drea a round of applause for for getting that bag let's do that real quick yes. that is right drea get that money from these suckers and hopefully drea maybe she could come out with like a, a ebook to tell a lot of these young ladies how to get other young suckers and ducks in the NBA, NFL, or the major leagues to date somebody twice their age and become impregnated. That would be great. And that would be a great e-course for you. Drea, you could teach. I'm sure they would all buy it. But the Cougars are on attack. So I'm going to keep it moving along. I gotta get I gotta get my reps back up. I'm a little I'm a little bit uh, rusty, but Kanye Kanye issued a message uh, to Adidas. Um, Kanye, let's let's see what Kanye had to say about Adidas real quick. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Oh, Adidas, y'all try to destroy me. And now we got the number one song in the world. And you out here, when I was there, y'all was stealing my ideas and putting in your company. Then you dismantled my creative team. Then you started making- Hold on. Kanye needs somebody to line. He needs somebody to line that up. I want to put some clippers. I, I just need somebody to line Ye's goatee, like, for real. Making fake colorways. Then you paid off my lawyers while I was with you. Then you dropped me on a morality clause, even though y'all was the ones stealing my designs. Then you got the CEO 
coming up to me talking about, are we just gonna burn the product? Saying that directly to my face. Oh man, this is, uh, you know, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Kanye, man. It's over for Adidas. I would I would want to say to the uh, people at Adidas, you might as well just set all that shit on fire because nobody's going to wear it. I mean, it's a true slap in the face. And I just believe, like, if you're going to cut cords with somebody, you cut the cord. Like, you know, even with the Kyrie and Nike situation, it looked like Nike immediately stopped selling the sneaker. I don't know. I could be wrong, but. Cut the cords, man. Cut the cords. But y'all, you, Kanye is too influential, and y'all are too deep in bed. Like, he really revived Adidas. He bought it back. And y'all know that you're not going to really make no real money without it. Because I'm not saying everybody was rocking Yeezys, but the way he, the way the Yeezy brand increased the reach and increase the name of adidas come on man but now you want to just take everything from the man and still sell his sneakers it's not gonna happen and then y'all got them gray ass shoes they don't look right you know they don't really have a flavor that I, I looked at those adidas and i really wish i would stop sending uh me the yeezys i mean they all sitting on the shelf people are totally against what you guys are doing so y'all gonna have to figure that out and if you're going to sell that man's shoe, you're going to have to bring him back in with his mental health, and you're going to have to work something out because people are not going to buy them. And when people do buy them, they're going to get roasted. You, you want to walk into high school with your fake-ass Yeezys on that you got from Adidas? They just, they, they're just like a sneaker that have lost their soul. Like, they're just shells of shoes without the man. So Adidas do right. Do right by the man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do right by him and hopefully get him a shave. Kanye got to shave because this this is... Oh, Adidas. Kanye got to cut. He got to... Somebody got to go and just line that goatee up. Please. Please line that up. I just don't know. That, that goatee look like it stank. Straight up. It look like food gets stuck in there. And it stank, bro line your joint dog like you know what i'm saying and i love yay i got my yeezys right behind me right behind me right behind this i got my yeezy so i just want my brother to line up that goatee and call me okay because i i i genuinely care about him so shout out to kanye yeezy do right do right by yeezy man come on we can't we can't go down this road I got to watch, I didn't watch the Oscars. I just saw clips from the Oscars. And I watched John Cena uh, walk out there uh, butt naked. And you know what's interesting? I don't hear, like, he walked out there and I guess I heard somebody say this was, it looked to be like some type of humiliation ritual. Um, Almost like, black people feel about black men wearing the dress but instead of the dress they just say yeah you're gonna you're gonna go out there naked john and he did it and i just saw that clip and i was like man the oscars have just gotten cringy bro like i, I don't there's nothing to even watch anymore like it looked very cringe to me i'm like that's the best y'all could come up with is just having a man they could have at least had him come out in his underwear or something. But that was a gag. I think one of the first people I saw do that gag where it was funny was when Martin Lawrence did it on Def Jam. He came out in his underwear like, come on, man. I wasn't ready yet, man. You know what I'm saying? But this was just cringy uh, to no end. I don't even know how you can do that like on national television. And then if I post a pic on Instagram, they snatch my page and block my page. It's very, very weird. I don't know who won an Oscar. I don't really care. But it was weird, to say the least. Very, very weird. So, eh. I don't know. 
But I know this. I don't see a lot of white men going in on him. Like, yeah, yeah, he sold me yeah. John Cena sold his soul. Yeah, he came out there and he let him take his clothes off and he came out ass naked. I got kids, man. And this is the emasculation of the white man. Like, I, I didn't hear that, which was interesting. Because had that been a brother, they would have towed his ass up. Like, for real. You said, who am I talking to? Somebody on Twitch. Because I only got, like, one person on Twitch. I'm talking to your ass if you're the only person on there. I got one person watching me on Twitch right now. Thank you, uh, Normalized. Y'all go check out them stand-up clips, man. I put up, I put up on there, man. Y'all, y'all check them out, man. And y'all too gotta check me out on uh, this new season of Comic View. That'd be great. That would be great, guys. To the young brother, to my one person on Twitch, man, I got more than one platform. My gosh, you ain't gotta roast me like that, big dog. I'm going to show you. I want to share something with you guys real quick. I'm going to share something with y'all. Here we go. Let me see if I can present this. I guess it didn't even. Did it upload? Let me see. Oh no. I guess it didn't pop up. Thought it did. Let me see. Okay. I'm just trying to show y'all something real quick if it pull up for me. I don't even know where the hell it went. Let me let me let me show y'all this. I know we was talking about John Santa, but I don't even. I no longer I no longer care about that. Let me show y'all this real quick. Y'all check this out. Man, come on, bro. Nah, I can't. Damn. I can't share this. Oh, ah, well. I guess I could show y'all on camera. I was trying to be all fancy with it, but. So, look. Y'all y'all see that? Y'all can look at that. Y'all see your boy? We're going to be on BT uh, Comic View. Y'all going to see T.I. You know, I was a big inspiration in T.I. doing comedy. I used to impersonate T.I. back in the day. It was a big joke. And now y'all can watch him on BT's Comic View and doing his best LeVar Walker impersonation where he'll be impersonating me. So this would be a good show. So y'all check that out. But the Oscars wasn't shit once again. And in our next topic, and our last topic, our good brothers Andrew Tate, the Tate boys are back in jail again. I don't know, from some accusations from 
04 and 05. And they are doing, they they just want these brothers behind bars. I don't know if they did what they did. I don't know why they did it. I don't know if they right or wrong. But I guess the way he talks, the way Andrew Tate talks, he might be waking up too many people. So that's what it is, man. And now I'm about to go. I'm about to go. A shout out to the, my one brother over there on Twitch watching me. I got people on Twitter watching this shit too. Shout out to everybody on, damn, there's a lot of people on Twitter watching this. Shout out to everybody on Twitter. But this is it. It's been another episode of LeVar Walker uh, Daily Show Podcast. And I'm out. I got things to do. So holla at your boy, man. Um, Yo, and if you are in Birmingham, Alabama, be sure to check me out at the Stardome and also go on over to YouTube and check me out. Um, on YouTube, I just put up two new videos. They're doing very, very well. Check those out, man. And let me see. What else y'all got to say here? Lady Nova, thank you for tuning in. G.I. Mo, I am 1115 over there on Twitch. What up? That's what's happening. I see all of y'all. Good, good, good. Everybody could hear me. This was a good show. I'll let your boy. This has been another episode of LeVar Walker Daily Show Podcast. See you tomorrow. <laughs>